morning. It is 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. And joining us in studio, Javis County Manager Bill Williams. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you today? Uh, I'm doing well. I want to say I think you're really looking thin today. <laughs> thin but big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Inflated. <laughs> Let me give you a little perspective, Mike. So this is what this has got to be by far the weirdest interview that Bill has ever sat in on. He's and with Mike, you know, that could be any of them. That's true. He's currently talking to a cardboard not only a cardboard cutout of Mike, but also Sean Smalls on his knees. Why are you on your knees? Because I couldn't fit a chair back here and I I'm I'm not gonna stand up the whole time. I figure I started my career on my knees. I might as well st- you know, stick with it. Okay. <laughs> you do you. It's Sean. what we do to get it on the radio, Michael. <laughs> Very good. I might propose to somebody by the end of this thing. Who knows? Well, well I, I we did notice two that people the, in the room. I Bill's did married. notice that your headshot, you know, famous people such as Mike Winters have headshots, you know, they pass out around town and mm-hmm. all that. And that's what I'm sitting here looking at is a, a headshot. I, I think I see a little bit of makeup on the on the photo if you look close where he's <laughs> really bit. done it up nice. But but what's really interesting is I think this came out of Sean's man cave because in the bottom <laughs> corner it says to Sean, I hope that you reach for your dreams, love Mike, and hey. it's just amazing. Sometimes the notes are just for me, you know. It's, it, it was nice that he did that. Yeah. Here's the thing that bothers me about this, and yes, we will get to actual business here in a minute. I swear somewhere there's there's the rest of the cutout floating around the country. <laughs> oh, I don't know where it is, but let's somewhere hope not. There's just a pair of Mike's legs and fishnets. It's somewhere. They're just out and about, and they're about six feet tall. Mm-hmm. So let's talk business. Let's let's get to the uh, the meat of things. Yeah. Uh, th- yesterday they had a county commission meeting. I think. Yes, we did. Uh, kind of out of it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got. I'm curious. How is? I imagine in the world we live in right now, it was probably a, a lot of. Was it a? A, a well attended is there people up in arms kind of meeting or is it just business as usual actually we didn't know how it was going to pan out yesterday as it turns out it was pretty much a normal meeting with the exception of it was an ex- well i wouldn't say it was an extremely long meeting but there was an extremely uh long quiet time where the commissioners were reviewing the cannabis regulations and mm. someone would suggest a change and they would all have to read that kind of dissect it so it was very quiet while they were kind of determining how they wanted to make the minor changes it it was a great uh ordinance that that lewis jaramillo our planning and zoning person and our attorney put together but at the same time there were a few things that needed to be changed and and they did a great job but it it was really odd because as they were reading you know and just kind of crunching the stuff in their mind it was just quiet oh yeah I'd imagine this is kind of, now. This is the whole like ecosystem that you guys are trying to build. Essentially, like it, you know, you, you hear something. Okay, recreational cannabis is legalized. Okay, now what? Now we have to build the entire business around it, from security to to transfer money to to you know locking down property, growing all this stuff. Yeah, it, it's it's really weird. You would think that if you're going to start a new industry, that you'd get all the groundwork laid first, and then start letting people come in and organize and keep things going towards the goal that you're after. The way that this came out is it didn't pass the the legislative session, so they had a special session right. just to pass it. They passed it. Now they tell us it's going to take effect September 1st, and if you don't have any regulations in place by then, all these people grandfather in. So now there's a mad scramble to put together some sort of regulation. It's been illegal, so why would we have regulations? Mm-hmm. Yeah, why would we want to take the time to, to actually put something together if, you know... It, we didn't have to deal with it on a, a legal level. Yeah, Makes it, sense. It, it's it, it's really weird. They kind of got the cart before the horse, mm-hmm. but like I say, everyone within the state has has had the same problems we have with putting something together last minute, trying to make sure that it was adequate, and it it did what it needed to do. Regulates the the growers, the sellers, uh, and the homeowner that wants to grow his twelve plants. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be dealing a lot with? Uh you know, the, the dispensary side of it. I mean, obviously with the city, you know, they, it's a little closer proximity to, to schools, churches, etc. So they've got those issues to worry about. Uh, in the county, a little bit more wide open space. So, I mean, I imagine at some point you're probably going to be seeing more of the dispensaries and stuff 
hopping out in the middle of nowhere as opposed to in the more populated areas, I would think. But I, I mean, is that something that you guys anticipate? or is well, that... well, that was something that they anticipated and something that they tried to plan for. Again, like I say, it's always good to be able to plan before everybody gets there, and, and they were able to do that. Good. So uh, the goal is not to have a place to go buy your pot or, or smoke it or whatever you're going to do uh, or uh, extract the chemicals out of it to make gummy bears or or brownies or whatever right next door to everybody you know because there's a lot of residents out in the county mm -hmm. you know it's it's not all agriculture it's it's not all farm fields it's not all grazing but there are houses interspersed within there mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. one of the things that they did is they said that any cannabis dealers or if you want to call it that need to be at least in a in a commercial zone and they okay. kind of designate what those zones are so it can't be in a residential area gotcha okay and any extraction or those type of manufacturing processes, which sometimes can be very um, sketch, well, sketch and, and, and also very dangerous. You know, mm -hmm. they use, uh, I think, propane and alcohol and all kinds of stuff. Butane. To butane yep. Okay. To extract the chemicals out of. I've heard. I've heard. So, so you've heard. I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Rumor has it. So, so they use a lot of chemicals and there's a lot of, uh, possibility that, that things could go wrong sure. there. so those need to be in industrial areas so Absolutely. and we do have areas within the county that are already zoned industrial mm -hmm. we have areas that are already zoned commercial so the the goal and the intent is to make sure that people don't have you know 75 cars every night at midnight going right. to the neighbor's house where it's uh joe's smoke room or whatever and I'd imagine on a, on that retail level, on that commercial level, there has to be that that level of almost like it needs to be lab done in like a lab where sterilization is is a thing, and, and there's a constant like check for for cleanliness and, and inspections and things like that. Right, and and I'm not sure because the state I think is the one that regulates and manages that, but sure. but there absolutely will have to be uh, first of all the building part. You know, we we deal with that, but there's mechanical uh, system mm -hmm. uh, applications that have to take place. Um, to make sure that the smells don't, sure. you know, go out into the public and, per, and per become a, a, a nuisance mm -hmm. to the neighbors and, and stuff like that. So, so there's that, but then there's also, you have to know how pure it is. I, I guess, you know, I don't know how dangerous it is. I mean, right. it depends what you read or what you hear, mm -hmm. you know, concentrated. Maybe it is super bad, dangerous, causes hallucinations. That's I, I have I have no idea. But and because it's it's been in this this gray area of legality there's never been any you know testing or any, right. anything done to it so nobody really knows so, so there will west. be purity testing there will be of course if you're manufacturing if you're cooking making cookies or brownies or gummies or whatever other form they have it in mm -hmm. uh you know that would have to follow the, the typical guidelines that you'd have for for anyone that was producing cakes or whatever to sell at farmers sure makes sense so that was uh, that was a, the bulk of I'm assuming the, uh, the the meeting last night was trying to figure out all the regulations and and or at least get a start to figuring things out. Yeah, that that was a, a big thing, and we had to have a public meeting. This has to be done in public, so sure. we had people come forward. And what this is is an amendment to Ordinance Number Seven, which is our planning and zoning ordinance, because there was not a section in there for cannabis regulations or cannabis producers. Right. And so this is Section Twenty Three of ordinance number seven, revision number 11. Goodness gracious. So anyway, there was a lot of uh, stuff there. This ordinance has been in place for a while, so it's, it's been modified over the years. But, but this added the whole new section for it. And then at the end of it, because of the urgency to have it done, there was a, we, we must, we need to vote on this. You know, right. need to make the corrections now. So they did discuss, as I said, for about 45 minutes, different aspects of it. And then the lawyer and the planning and zoning director left the room, went and typed up the changes so that whenever they signed the ordinance that it was correct, that mm -hmm. they were actually signing the one. One of the things that came up, which I thought was kind of good, Commissioner Taylor, <clears throat> you know, was sitting there quietly reading along, and as everyone was, and mm -hmm. he says, what's this deal under Section 7A owners? It says name, address, telephone number, applicant, persons owning an interest of 10% or more in the cannabis establishment, including all individuals having corporate or partnership interest in the property and operation of the business have to be on the application form. He says, where'd the 10% come from? He says, well, that, you know, we patterned our stuff off of several different resolutions, ordinances, whatever that had been done across the state. And, mm -hmm. and that was in, in someone's ordinance and, and we probably borrowed it. You know, sure. I'm, I'm not real sure how it came to be, but he said, why the 10%? He says, then 
if you wanted to remain anonymous, you could say, okay, I've got eight kids and they're all going to be 9%. And then, you know, I'll have to put my name on the line or whatever. And so I said, why are we doing that? People need to own it. You know, if, if they're in, in the cannabis business, Mm -hmm. why are we giving them a place, a place to hide behind, you know? Right. And so, uh, and for this to work, it all has to stay like you, like you know, in regulation above board and on you know right. all on paper. So that makes absolute sense. Now he he brought up a very good point. So they discussed that for a while and and made sure that there was no uh, requirement that it had to be a ten percent, and and there was not, and so we took that portion out. So now, uh, on your application, you will have to give your name, address, any person owning interest in the business, mm-hmm. as well as whether it's a corporate or partnership interest. It says any any tie to it. I, I don't remember exactly how they worded it. The attorneys do a really good job of doing that. They're so. great with language. <laughs> but that was kind of interesting and kind of caught me off guard. I, I didn't think about it from mm-hmm. that point point of view, but that's why we have our commissioners and that's right. why they do such a good job because they all work off each other. That's what's great is having all those different eyes because like you said, you know, you, <clears throat> you glazed over and missed that one part. They, you know, <laughs> that commissioner caught it and, and it's, it's just several different sets of eyes working together right. to, to make sure that it all, you know, pans out. And of course, Commissioner Ezell is an attorney. So, you know, he took a totally different approach than everyone right. else. You know, some of us are more practical. Some of us are attorneys that, you know, cross every T and dot every I and make sure that the comma is in the right place because it means something totally different. Mm-hmm. And and so it was really good that we had such a good mix of people that could, could look at it. Of course, it's been out for public review. People, you know, had the opportunity to speak for or against it. Uh, and, and again, I was kind of surprised. I didn't know whether it was going to be jam-packed. We prepared. We we now have an FM transmitter oh, at Chavez County. So, wow. So currently, we're you can tune in to eighty eight point one in the parking lot or in the front. We had a boombox out front on your front FM dial, just in case nice. uh, we had overflow. We could plug in the FM radio, and that works a lot better. What I used to do is bring uh, my wife's musician, so I would take this my sound system in and and tap into their system and set it outside it was it was a horrible setup because bunch we, of wires so much latency and and echoing and you know just wasn't set up for that mm-hmm. this works so much better yeah and, that's that's really cool i'll have to work up some imaging for you guys yeah 88.1 there we go and can i get a cut out like mike I, so, I, you know i can hand them out apparently like, or personality cardboard cutouts are really becoming our thing because i just found out about <clears throat> another cardboard cutout that's coming our way in the very near future by the way, Mike, be, really? prepared, yeah, be prepared for that one. Who's in that one? Uh, well, let's just say he is a 16-time world champion, limo riding, jet plane flying, kiss stealing, wheeling dealing, nature boy. <laughs> well, I saw the Ric Flair. Yeah, Thomas got a Ric Flair cut up, cardboard cut. Yeah. Uh huh. I, I thought he gave it to Freddie. I think I'm not sure if he gave it to Freddie or if he's he just like. Showed it to Freddie. I'm not sure what, what's happening, but I just know that there was money invested into a regular card, cardboard cutout. So the cardboard people are really, uh, really making bank this this quarter. Yeah, <laughs> pulling it in. Hey, um, I know this is probably more of the sheriff's question, but um, when it comes to the to the enforcement, all that are 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 the law enforcement side doing? Because you can't do breathalyzer tests for people under the influence. I mean, are they are they kind of doing training and stuff to, to go that direction with that? Yeah, they absolutely have already done training. They already know how to identify all that kind of thing. I know nothing about it, and I can't imagine, you know, what they do and, and how they determine. But, but yeah, they do have their, you know, usual physical tests and all that. I know they can do chemical stuff, but how they do it, you'll have to ask them. I think they're on next hour. Is that what they What they do, uh, no, it's actually uh, American Legion, but what they do is well, uh, they Charles approach, was with us. Yeah, oh, that's right, he is. They approach the window and uh, they, they tap on it. And they, when you roll the window down, they say, did you see the latest episode of Scooby-Doo, man? <laughs> and based on that response, that's that's where they go from there. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's how you know. <laughs> Zoinks. Dude, it was crazy. That's The cops have to learn the lingo. Of, like talking that in that kind of that laughy tone. It's, it's well, all training uh, for him. I'm going to tap out real quick. Uh, so, Mike, if you want to take over for just a sec? Sure. Um, so, uh, I don't think we've actually talked other than the, the cannabis stuff. Is there other things uh, that happened at the commission meeting we want to make sure we let the public know about? Yeah. Uh, as usual, we usually start out with presentations from the public. So, we have our uh, local economic development corporation come in and give us a... It's always very encouraging because they work so hard. They find opportunities for businesses to come here and to grow and to, to have jobs. And as usual, they did that. They talk about the CTE program, the career technical 
education program that they're developing with uh, Eastern New Mexico University and others to, to make sure that we have a, a diverse group of uh, people to, to take the jobs on that, that, that they develop for us. So they did that. Uh, the chamber, of course, came in, talked about the third uh, edition of the Roswell magazine that they've started putting out, uh, yeah. where that's going to go and all the things that they do that's so good. But we had a kind of a special presentation, special guest, I guess, Chavez County Health Council, and that was Jennifer Smith. Mm-hmm. I believe it was two weekends ago they had their health care expo, and they yeah. divided their campus. So part of the the program was at the courthouse on the lawn, and part of the program was down at the Chavez County Administrative Building near the sheriff's office. I was calling it Health Fair at the Domes. The Domes. A, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> There's got, a green dome in town. There's a health fair happening at it today. <laughs> well, well, it worked out really well, and they came to tell us just how much they appreciated everybody's contributions to that. You know, the, the county, you know, we have those facilities that are available uh, for the public uh, it's your facility. You know, you can use it. You just have to, you know, uh, follow our guidelines and fill out a little paperwork, but it's available for, you know, organizations to use, including uh, the Chavez County Health Council. But Absolutely. the fact that they were having the farmer's market downtown at the same time, they said, was great. They said they could have never thought to plan it that way, but it worked out so well because they were able to share resources. People that came for the health fair said, hey, you know, there's something else going on here. And people that, that came to get their vegetables said, hey, here's a health fair. You know, I can go get a shot if I want to, or I can, exactly. you know, find out how to exercise and, and be as thin as Mike. You know, there's just a lot of opportunities <laughs> there. And then down at the at the Southern Dome, uh, we had the DWI people there. And, you know, they had the, the I don't know what they call them, intoxication goggles or whatever. Oh, they, yeah, you know, the, the, the drunk goggles. Yeah, yeah. They, they had all their stuff set up there, and they had a lot of interest, you know, and, and they reach out to a lot of kids especially. You know, that's what I'm really proud of for them is uh, they can show the kids that, you know, there's something to this. You know, it's, it's very mm-hmm. important that you realize not to drink and drive. You know, you don't need to be drunk. <laughs> So, and they, they get it presented in kind of a fun way this way. Oh, absolutely. But hopefully they do that message job. sinks home. It's like this is what happens under the influence uh, we're doing it in a fun, controlled, joking environment now, but um, this is in real life, and this is why we don't want you to do it because, you know, yeah, the jail time's bad, but at the end of the day, we don't want you or someone else to lose their life over this. Absolutely. So. That's 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 the message that get out. Uh, young people come out, and they meet with our local law enforcement and find out, hey, these guys aren't the enemy. They're on, they are on our side, too, and, and they're making sure that we get home safe and, and they care about us, and I, I think that's great. Uh, you know, a big shout out to, to all the DWI people that work on that. Uh, they, they did a great job. So, but Absolutely. anyway, Jennifer came in, uh, spoke to us about that. want to congratulate them on the great job that they did. So then we went into the cannabis uh, public meeting and talked about that for, for quite a while. And, and a lot of it was, was silence. You know, there's probably about 45 minutes of time when they were just digesting the information and figuring out the best way to reword something and, and uh, really thank the public that was there for being so patient and uh, letting them have the time that they needed to, to make a good stab at it. it. It can be amended in future, you know, meetings if we see a, a need, but getting it in place was was crucial. We had to have that done before September first so we could uh, be prepared. Sure, it's that's, and that's the the part of government that some people either don't like or don't understand, but but that's what makes government government you know it's government never does anything fast but they try to do it right yeah in, hopefully well, some it's cases. thorough <laughs> <laughs> yeah thorough it, it, exactly it because like anything it's not just cannabis but any issue that the that the county or any municipality has to uh, put in place as a law or an ordinance or something of that nature you, you, you got to make sure it's constitutional. You got to make sure it's everything else. And, and you have to look from all angles. And, and so something that seems just common sense, you got to make sure it's just common sense before it's common sense. Well, and, just, and that's the government's job sometimes. And, and just like I said a minute ago, you know, when the attorneys look at it and they say, we need to move that comma from here to here because with the comma there, it means something totally different. And don't, yeah. 
know that unless you're experienced in that and figure it out. So that's why they pay them the big bucks. That's right. And then the next thing that we did, uh, I mean, we did several things yesterday. Uh, again, as usual, a lot of it's housekeeping. Uh, but one of the other big things that we did was our infrastructure capital improvement plan or ICIP. We've been working on that, developing it. Uh, we had a public hearing on that, I believe last month and the commissioners have to approve it before we can submit it to Santa Fe and it's, it's due in September. And okay. so we always try to submit it a month before in case there's some problem with kick it back and, and, or whatever. Yeah. If they kick it back and say, no, I want you to hit this again. We have another month to do it. We can't be up against the wire and, and trying to turn something in that's, that's not approved or, or sloppy or, or not thorough. Uh, so we, we went through that process, uh, Georgiana hunt and others in the finance department have been working on that. Well, all departments actually, because the road department turns in all their projects, detention center turns in their projects, facility. Everybody's got yeah. an angle on this one. So everyone turns in their, their needs. And of course, no one knows the needs of the detention center better than the detention center. No one knows the needs of the sheriff better than the sheriff. So, you know, they, they have the buy-in. They understand. They prioritize their projects. They send them in. We put them on the master spreadsheet. And then the commissioners determine which projects are going to be our top priorities for the year. When we present them to the legislators, they have to be on the ICIP plan to even be presented it they figure if it's if it's not a high enough priority to be in your five-year plan then you probably don't need to be asking us don't need that bad yeah (laughs) but they ask us to try to limit our request to the top five priority so we usually put together our top 10 priority for in-house but the top five are the ones we're going to try to present to the legislators and so again we've asked for the bridge on brasher road because we know that uh they're very interested in funding that because it was sure. line item vetoed a couple of years ago so that's on there uh we need a roof repair and chavis county's actually already budgeted their own money we're, we're working towards they did that last year and, and because we're changing out our heating cooling systems uh, we need that to be done on the roof before we start on the on the actual roof sure. repair and, and so can... you know but they funded that in-house but but still if we can go to the legislators and say look it's going to cost us eight hundred and forty five thousand dollars to put a new roof on this 20 year old building you know anything you can do is is appreciated and so that's the kind of things we do we we don't like things to get old and fall apart and in the case of our roof we're right behind the curve where we should have replaced it this time of course this has been a unusually wet year so we've we've wished we could have gotten it done last year as we planned but so we've we've had a few leaks this year, but and it's been a unusual, you know, last couple of years across the board here. So. Right, <laughs> and, and it's not like you know we woke up one day and said, "Oh my gosh, we need a new roof." We we already were there. The commissioners sure. had already budgeted for it. It's just the timing and needing to do it in the right order. Of course, if you put a new roof down and then you replace the air conditioning units on the roof, you probably are going to puncture it in numerous places. So, sure, we had to do all that correctly. So. So the the items that end up making the top five, I guess you could say, um, when they when the commission determines those those top needs, is it just need the big variable or is it the cost like or chance that they think it'll get approved? I mean, what's the variables they use well, to determine which are the top ones? All of those things come into play. For instance, yeah. if we've already gotten partial funding on a project, we need to and we don't have the funds available to finish it, of course, we need to ask, hey, can can you spare another 150000 to finish this thing up? And yeah. so that comes into play. And uh, we did have uh, the courthouse window project is, is on there on our top five again because, like I say, that project to replace the windows in the historic courthouse to make sure that it's standing or, or that, you know, the windows are still in place another 100 years from now. Uh, because they were completely rotted out and, and the third floor and the dome especially the other ones are in better shape but still they're they're not energy efficient 21st century windows like we need to replace them with they need to look the same but they need to do a better job uh, but anyway the first opinion of probable cost by the uh, original architect that that helped us to develop that project the original opinion of probable cost was four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to replace all the windows in the courthouse great Oof. So we planned for that. We asked for that. We uh, got got that amount of money to replace the windows. So then we went out to the actual design architects that helped us figure out, helped us work 
uh, with the State Historic Preservation Office to come up with a window design that they would allow. We did all that stuff and then went out for bids. And the, uh, their opinion of probable cost was $800,000. Mm-hmm. The bids came in and it was $1.2 million to get it done. So the legislators gave us the original amount. They gave us a, another amount last year, but we're still a little bit short to completely do the project, so we're asking for it. Whether they'll give gotcha. it to us or not, we don't know, but that's one of the criteria. If it's an ongoing project and we need money, we need to keep working towards that. Another gotcha. thing, as we've discussed in the past, if for some reason there's money available for infrastructure, we're going to go after infrastructure projects. Sure. Uh, this year, uh, our number one project is a health department Uh It's a requirement for the counties uh, to provide a public health office. And we've provided one for for our local people here. The building that it's in is an old building. It needs a lot of remodeling. We can't remodel it while they're in there. Uh, There are monies available because of COVID and pandemic and all the buzzwords that they use for that. You know, these funds have to be for... uh, for pandemic related, they have to be COVID related, uh, healthcare, uh, you know, families, so you, pick a, you know, all these words are in both. there. And so we yeah. say, Hey, what better time to ask for help with a health office than now we've got some money that, uh, has come in from the feds that we can mm-hmm. use a portion of it, for that. but, but we need to ask, uh, because the timing just seems right. Other things, you know, certain projects are just necessary in our community. You know, I, I think of, of one that uh, was, it's a city project, but, it, but it's a great project. Uh, you know, some things come in, in the right time, and this one certainly mm-hmm. did. The city uh, was funded for uh, all-inclusive parks. So yeah. persons that, that have different needs than, than you and I might have still need the ability to go to a park and to enjoy themselves. And, and so that was one of the things that came up uh, uh Representative Nybert, you know, uh, made a big push to help them sure. get funding for that. And, and, you know, those are the kind of things we have to stay in communication with our legislators and know kind of what their goals are. We talk with our commissioners and find out what their goals are for our community. Sure. We evaluate the likelihood of monies being there or interest being there, and that's how we prioritize. And that's kind of where you want your community leaders, you know, your elected officials you want them to be smart, good leaders, but you also want that smart politician side. And that's where the smart politician sides go and saying, you know what? Hey, they're going to have COVID funding for health. Hey, we can, we have a need at, at the health department or wherever it is. Um, this covers both angles. Yes, we can get the money because it's under COVID, but really we're fixing that and the problem we had before that. And, and that's where the, the smart politician side can come in and say and know where to take advantage of those things using the right buzzwords and the right language to, to get what we need. Right, and, and being connected to our communities. And that's what, yeah. that's what we're fortunate to have here is we have representation that's connected to our community. So we had a public hearing. We asked people to tell us, what are you interested in? What do you want us to push? And, and you kind of get a feel for it. Now, sure. I, I do want to give a shout out to the departments because, for instance, the health department. That was identified by our staff years ago because it's on a five-year plan. It never was a high priority. We have lots of things that are needed or or would be great for our community, but the time's not right. But someone had to have that uh, recognize that that was a need and get it on the ICIP, whether that recognition came from the public who said, hey, commissioners, how about a project XYZ? And hey, that's a great idea. Let's put it on there. We may not get funded this year. We may not even put it as a high priority, but we listen to the people or they listen to the people and and uh, instruct us to do what's, what we need to do. Yeah, and, and just because it's not a priority now, since it's on the table, that's the table for when down the road it may become a priority. Right, so. and, and you know, if it's on the priority, even if it's on two or three years later and all of a sudden mid-year something comes up and, hey, you know, Does anyone, we get calls from senators and stuff all the time. Uh, We have some money set aside for a specific purpose. Do you have any projects that fit within this? And if it's on our ICIP, yeah, we we do have a project that fits within it. It's not something that's on the radar for this year, but yes, we do have a project and we can start working with them and we can change that priority if we need to because of funding. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, it's a good thing. It's a, it's a slow thing, but it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just all the time. Um, we got a couple more minutes before we got to wrap up here. Uh, anything else we want to make sure we, we don't forget to tell folks about that happened yesterday? Uh, I forgot to bring my, I usually bring an agenda, as you know, so I can sit there and, and look down the list and I forgot to bring my agenda this morning. So I'm having to do this from memory. So I hope that I do. Uh, no, I believe we've pretty much covered everything, uh, okay. that took place. I mean, like I say, we did have our, our usual housekeeping stuff. We had a properties disposal, uh, because we do the online auctions and we keep that current and up to date, that list is usually pretty small. It's just whatever comes up in the previous month or two. So I, I want to say it had like 30 items on it that they approved. Yeah, you can go ahead and get rid of those. You don't need them anymore. It okay. used to be when we had an auction every two or three years, we would store stuff outside. It would be totally garbage by the time we got ready to sell it. You know, if you had a car that you were going to get rid of by the time it came up for sale, all four all tires were out. flat. The windshield yeah. got broken out by hail, uh, you know, whatever. And, and it was two years older. And so of yeah. course it was worth a lot less. And now we turn those things around much quicker and, and that, you know, just reimburses us a lot quicker, yeah, a lot it better. It helps offset some of the costs. And but, but because of that, these lists that are, you know, 10 pages long of these are things that we need to get rid of at this auction that we've been waiting two years for, you know, that doesn't happen anymore. It's very efficient, very clean. And we actually keep better track of our assets that way too. And for all you, uh, bargain pickers and uh you know your american picker shopper types and, and yard sale folks that's a great you know look on that list keep a tabs on that list you know you'll find all kinds of great furniture to vehicles to equipment and stuff that pop up in there from time to time and Everywhere. normally would have cost you a ton of cash but county yeah. county bought it new so they they, yeah. they flip that bill and you get to save some money on it What's, it's govdeals.com, and you can go on there, and City of Albuquerque, El Paso, Bernalillo County, Chavez County. You know, there's, there's dozens of, of entities within uh, New Mexico and Texas. And then if you want to broaden out your search, you can find just about anything on there. One of the things that Chavez County is going to be having on there, and it's probably only three of us that really have an interest, but we were not going to throw the old windows – the, the windows that are so recognizable Those as part of the Chavez County Courthouse, you know, yeah. the original construction, we saved the, those windows sash. And they're, in, you know, some of them are in horrible shape, some of them are in better shape, but rather than throw them in a dumpster, yeah. we thought we need to give the opportunity to people to purchase those. So we're going to actually have those on our auction site. Hopefully some of them will sell. If they do, great. It's money back to the to the county and offsets, you know, what we all end up paying in taxes. You know, we're just trying to be as efficient as we can. Uh, and I'll, you know, send a letter. This this is an original window from the Chavez County Courthouse that was completed in 1912, and they were replaced in a 2021 uh, remodel. And, and, you know, people can have that and maybe mean something to them. And, yeah. and, of course, there were a few windows that aren't as recognizable. That was one sash over one sash that, you know, people don't really recognize as part of the courthouse. But the big ones on the front, on the dome, uh, the multi-paned windows that are on the third floor. And then as we progress and we have those large windows downstairs, the arches, you know, there may be a lot of interest on those when those come up. but. Yeah. But but the the dome and the third floor windows will be on our auction site and you, it'd just be kind of fun to have I think. Yeah. Do you think one of those windows will fit in the the museum there in the courthouse? Yes. Not all I, of them, I, but maybe one of them. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I think I just think I think those would be cool. And then I hope there's some people out there that maybe get one and give it a new life of something else and say, hey, I made this piece of art with this with this awesome historic window that's not good as a window anymore. Well, I hope to get one if, if only I hang it on the wall in my shop. I don't care. Yeah. You, you know, it's 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 a that's neat a conversation piece of, piece of right. Else. It's a neat piece of local know. history, and you know, honestly, I hope that the price is real high on those, and the county makes sure. tens of thousands of dollars, and I'm way too cheap to buy one. <laughs> but <laughs> likelihood is a, likelihood oh. is all of us will be able to buy one at a very competitive price, more than likely. There you go. Because I, I doubt that there are more than half a dozen of us who who really are interested in that. But those of us who are interested definitely need to uh, come out and, and try to get a piece of our local history. Absolutely. 
We'll have to do something with it. Maybe start a painted window cam, like the painted horses. Yeah, the painted ponies. Yeah. Painted yeah. ponies. We'll do, we do painted windows all around Chavis County. I, I like some it. of the. Yeah, I like it. You can people paint, can behave themselves. You can have a, a <laughs> portrait of yourself painted in the window and set it here when you're gone, and I can like <laughs> look at you through a window and you know just feel like you're right here. That's right. They can fight. Uh, the big flat version of me and see who wins. <laughs> you, you no, know, it's really odd. I'm sitting here. I'm making eye contact with your your photo, and it, it's the weirdest thing. I, you know, you'd think you'd be looking up at the ceiling and twiddling your thumbs, but I'm, it's as if you're still here. You're gonna see me rub my nose or something. You know. <laughs> yep, that's true. Well, very good. I, we better wrap this up. Um, of course, you missed any of uh, the county commission you can go back to the to, to the county's website they they film them and everything right and uh, you can go back and check them out at your leisure and of course if you have any questions um your county commissioner contact information is on the website as well shoot them an email and uh if you have questions thoughts ideas any of that stuff please hmm. do yeah please absolutely. call anytime you have a question absolutely well thank you bill you're welcome thank appreciate you. it it's good take to some mcdonald's you. with you don't let sean eat all by himself yeah, he, and, uh, he's getting pretty thin himself, all this running back and forth. It's been pretty amazing. Uh, he is. He's getting a workout. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We'll talk to you next time.